Exodus chapter 30. Moses is, in this chapter, further instructed, 1. Concerning the altar of incense, verse 110. 2. Concerning the ransom money which the Israelites were to pay, when they were numbered, verse 11 16. 3. Concerning the lava of brass, which was set for the priests to wash in, verse 17 21. 4. Concerning the making up of the anointing oil, and the use of it, verse 22 33. 5. Concerning the incense and perfume which were to be burned on the golden altar, verse 34, etc. The Tabernacles and its Furniture. BC 1491. 1 And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood shalt thou make it. 2 A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. 4 square shall it be, and 2 cubits shall be the height thereof, the horns thereof shall be of the same. 3 And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. 4 And 2 golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it with all. 5 And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. 6 And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where one will meet with thee. 7 And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning, when he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. 8 And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. 9 Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. 10 And there and shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements, once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations, it is most holy unto the Lord. 1. The orders given concerning the altar of incense are, 1. That it was to be made of wood and covered with gold, pure gold, about a yard high and half a yard square, with horns at the corners, a golden cornice round it, with rings and staves of gold, for the convenience of carrying it, 5. 1 5. It does not appear that there was any grate to this altar for the ashes to fall into, that they might be taken away, but, when they burnt incense, a golden censer was brought with coals in it, and placed upon the altar, and in that censer the incense was burnt, and with it all the coals were taken away, so that no coals nor ashes fell upon the altar. The measure of the altar of incense in Ezekiel's temple is double to what it is here, Ezekiel 41. 22, and it is there called an altar of wood and there is no mention of gold, to signify that the incense, in gospel times, should be spiritual, the worship plain, and the service of God enlarged, for in every place incense should be offered, Malachi 1. 11. 2. That it was to be placed before the veil, on the outside of that partition, but before the mercy seat, which was within the veil. 5. 6. For though he that ministered at the altar could not see the mercy seat, the veil interposing, yet he must look towards it, and direct his incense that way, to teach us that though we cannot with our bodily eyes see the throne of grace, that blessed mercy seat, for it is such a throne of glory that God, in compassion to us, holds back the face of it, 
and spreads a cloud upon it, yet we must in prayer by faith set ourselves before it, direct our prayer, and look up. 3. That Aaron was to burn sweet incense upon this altar, every morning and every evening, about half a pound at a time, which was intended, not only to take away the ill smell of the flesh that was burnt daily on the brazen altar, but for the honor of God, and to show the acceptableness of his people's services to him, and the pleasure which they should take in ministering to him. 5. 7. 8. As by the offerings on the brazen altar satisfaction was made for what had been done displeasing to God, so, by the offering on this, what they did well was, as it were, recommended to the divine acceptance, for our two great concerns with God are to be acquitted from guilt and accepted as righteous in his sight. 4. That nothing was to be offered upon it but incense, nor any incense but that which was appointed. 5. 9. God will have his own service done according to his own appointment, and not otherwise. 5. That this altar should be purified with the blood of the sin offering put upon the horns of it, every year, upon the day of atonement. 5. 10. See Leviticus 16. 18. 19. The high priest was to take this in his way, as he came out from the Holy of Holies. This was to intimate to them that the sins of the priests who ministered at this altar, and of the people for whom they ministered, put a ceremonial impurity upon it, from which it must be cleansed by the blood of atonement. 2. This incense altar typified, 1 the mediation of Christ. The brazen altar in the court was a type of Christ dying on earth, the golden altar in the sanctuary was a type of Christ interceding in heaven, in virtue of his satisfaction. This altar was before the mercy seat, for Christ always appears in the presence of God for us, he is our advocate with the Father, 1 John 2. 1 and his intercession is unto God of a sweet smelling savour. This altar had a crown fixed to it, for Christ intercedes as King. Father, one will, John 17, 24, 2. The devotions of the saints, whose prayers are said to be set forth before God, as incense, Psalm 141, 2. As the smoke of the incense ascended, so much our desires towards God rise in prayer, being kindled with the fire of holy love and other pious affections. When the priest was burning incense the people were praying, Luke 1, 10, to signify that prayer is the true incense. This incense was offered daily, it was a perpetual incense verse 8, for we must pray always that is, we must keep up stated times for prayer every day, morning and evening, at least, and never omit it, but thus pray without ceasing. The lamps were dressed or lighted at the same time that the incense was burnt, to teach us that the reading of the scriptures, which are our light and lamp, is a part of our daily work, and should ordinarily accompany our prayers and praises. When we speak to God we must hear what God says to us, and thus the communion is complete. The devotions of sanctified souls are well pleasing to God, of a sweet smelling savour, the prayers of saints are compared to sweet odours, Reverend 5. 8, but it is the incense which Christ adds to them that makes them acceptable, Reverend 8. 3 and his blood that atones for the guilt which cleaves to our best services. And, if the heart and life be not holy, even incense is an abomination, Isaiah 1. 13, and he that offers it is as if he blessed an idol, Isaiah 66. 3. 11 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
12 When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord, when thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. 13 This they shall give, every one that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is twenty juras, an half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. 14 Every one that passeth among them that are numbered, from twenty years old and above, shall give an offering unto the Lord. 15 The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half or shekel, when they give an offering unto the Lord, to make an atonement for your souls. 16 And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shalt appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord, to make an atonement for your souls. Some observe that the repetition of those words, the Lord spoke unto Moses, here and afterwards verse 17, 22, 34, intimates that God did not deliver these precepts to Moses in the mount, in a continued discourse, but with many intermissions, giving him time either to write what was said to him or at least to charge his memory with it. Christ gave instructions to his disciples as they were able to hear them. Moses is here ordered to levy money upon the people by way of pole, so much ahead, for the service of the tabernacle. This he must do when he numbered the people. Some think that it refers only to the first numbering of them, now when the tabernacle was set up, and that this tax was to make up what was deficient in the voluntary contributions for the finishing of the work, or rather for the beginning of the service in the tabernacle. Others think that it was afterwards repeated upon any emergency and always when the people were numbered and that David offended in not demanding it when he numbered the people. But many of the Jewish writers, and others from them, are of opinion that it was to be an annual tribute, only it was begun when Moses first numbered the people. This was that tribute money which Christ paid, for fear of offending his adversaries, Matthew 17. 27 when yet he showed good reason why he should have been excused. Men were appointed in every city to receive this payment yearly. Now, 1. The tribute to be paid was half a shekel, about 15 pence of our money. The rich were not to give more, nor the poor less verse 15, to intimate that the souls of the rich and poor are alike precious and that God is no respecter of persons, Acts. 10. 34, Job 34. 19. In other offerings men were to give according to their ability, but this, which was the ransom of the soul, must be alike for all, for the rich have as much need of Christ as the poor, and the poor are as welcome to him as the rich they both alike contributed to the maintenance of the temple service, because both were to have a like interest in it and benefit by it. In Christ and his ordinances rich and poor meet together, the Lord is the maker, the Lord Christ is the redeemer of them both, Proverbs. 22. 2. The Jews say, if a man refused to pay this tribute, he was not comprehended in the expiation. 2. This tribute was to be paid as a ransom of the soul, that there might be no plague among them. Hereby they acknowledged that they received their lives from God, that they had forfeited their lives to him, and that they depended upon his power and patience for the continuance of them, and thus they did homage to the God of their lives and deprecated those plagues which their sins had deserved. 3. This money that was raised was to be employed in the service of the tabernacle verse 16, with it they bought sacrifices, flour, incense, wine, oil, fuel, 
salt, priests' garments, and all other things which the whole congregation was interested in. Note, those that have the benefit of God's tabernacle among them must be willing to defray the expenses of it, and not grudge the necessary charges of God's public worship. Thus we must honor the Lord with our substance, and reckon that best laid out which is laid out in the service of God. Money indeed cannot make an atonement for the soul, but it may be used for the honor of him who has made the atonement, and for the maintenance of the gospel by which the atonement is applied. 17 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 18 Thou shalt also make a lava of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash with all, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. 19 For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat, 20 When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water, that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. 21 So they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they die not, and it shall be a statute for ever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Orders are here given, 1. For the making of a lava, or font, of brass, a large vessel, that would contain a good quantity of water, which was to be set near the door of the tabernacle, 5. 18. The foot of brass, it is supposed, was so contrived as to receive the water, which was let into it out of the lava by spouts or cocks. They then had a lava for the priests only to wash in, but to us now there is a fountain open for Judah and Jerusalem to wash in, Zechariah 13, 1, an inexhaustible fountain of living water so that it is our own fault if we remain in our pollution. 2. For the using of this lava. Aaron and his sons must wash their hands and feet at this lava every time they went in to minister, every morning, at least, 5. 1921. For this purpose clean water was put into the lava fresh every day. Though they washed themselves ever so clean at their own houses, that would not serve. They must wash at the lava, because that was appointed for washing. 2 Kings 5. 12 14. This was designed, 1, to teach them purity in all their ministrations, and to possess them with a reverence of God's holiness and a dread of the pollutions of sin. They must not only wash and be made clean when they were first consecrated, but they must wash and be kept clean whenever they went in to minister. He only shall stand in God's holy place that has clean hands and a pure heart, Psalm 24, 3, 4. And, 2, it was to teach us, who are daily to attend upon God daily to renew our repentance for sin and our believing application of the blood of Christ to our souls for remission, for in many things we daily offend and contract pollution, John 13. 8, 10, Jam. 3, 2. This is the preparation we are to make for solemn ordinances. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts, and then draw nigh to God, Jam. 4. 8. To this law David alludes in Psalm 26. 6. One will wash my hands in innocency, so will one compass thine altar, O Lord. 22. Moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 23. Take thou also unto thee principal spices, of pure myrrh five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, twenty-four and of cassa five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil olive and hin, twenty-five and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, 
an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. 26 And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony. 27 And the table and all his vessels, and the candlestick and his vessels, and the altar of incense. 28 And the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the lava and his foot. 29 And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy, whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. 30 And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. 31 And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. 32 Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it, after the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. 33 Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. 34 And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stacked, and on nature, and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. 35 And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. 36 And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in there. Tabernacle of the congregation, where one will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. 37 And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. 38 Whosoever shall make like unto that, to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. Directions are here given for the composition of the holy anointing oil and the incense that were to be used in the service of the tabernacle, with these God was to be honored, and therefore he would appoint the making of them, for nothing comes to God but what comes from him. 1. The holy anointing oil is here ordered to be made up the ingredients, and their quantities, are prescribed. 5. 23 25. Interpreters are not agreed concerning them, we are sure, in general, they were the best and fittest for the purpose. They must needs be so when the divine wisdom appointed them for the divine honor. It was to be compounded secundumatum, after the art of the apothecary verse 25. The spices, which were in all nearly half a hundred weight, were to be infused in the oil, which was to be about five or six quarts, and then strained out, leaving an admirable sweet smell in the oil. With this oil God's tent and all the furniture of it were to be anointed, it was to be used also in the consecration of the priests. 5. 26.30 it was to be continued throughout their generations. 5. 31. The tradition of the Jews is that this very oil which was prepared by Moses himself lasted till near the captivity. But Bishop Patrick shows the great improbability of the tradition, and supposes that it was repeated according to the prescription here, for Solomon was anointed with it. 2 Kings 1. 39, and some other of the kings, and all the high priests with such a quantity of it that it ran down to the skirts of the garments, and we read of the making up of this ointment, 1 Chronicles 9. 30, yet all agree that in the second temple there was none of this holy oil, which he supposes was owing to a notion they had that it was not lawful to make it up. Providence overruling that want as a presage of the better unction of the Holy Ghost in Gospel times, the variety of whose gifts was typified by these several sweet ingredients. To show the excellency of holiness, 
there was that in the tabernacle which was in the highest degree grateful both to the sight and to the smell. Christ's name is said to be as ointment poured forth, Canticle of Canticles 1, 3, and the good name of Christians better than precious ointment, Ecl. 7, 1, 2. The incense which was burned upon the golden altar was prepared of sweet spices likewise, though not so rare and rich as those of which the anointing oil was compounded, 5, 34, 35. This was prepared once a year, the Jews say, a pound for each day of the year, and three pounds over for the day of atonement. When it was used, it was to be beaten very small, thus it pleased the Lord to bruise the Redeemer when he offered himself for a sacrifice of a sweet smelling savour. 3. Concerning both these preparations the same law is here given verse 32, 33, 37, 38, that the like should not be made for any common use. Thus God would preserve in the people's minds a reverence for his own institutions, and teach us not to profane nor abuse anything whereby God makes himself known, as those did who invented to themselves, for their common entertainments, instruments of music like David, Amos 6, 5. It is a great affront to God to jest with sacred things particularly to make sport with the word and ordinances of God, or to treat them with lightness, Matthew 22. 5. That which is God's peculiar must not be used as a common thing, 